Hi, the second one in succession. I've just had a Cornish one with, with the mop and it didn't work out to be too good. But I think it's just about, there's enough going for it. So this one is, is, um, is a sort of, I might use the hake on this one, but I'll start with the mop. So painting a sky with a mop, how to paint a simple sky with a mop in wet in wet. I will do a Lakeland type of scene. So we'll wet the paper all over with the mop, it holds a lot of water. It's a new one, it's a, uh, it's a student one, high quality goat hair, hair wash brushes, pro art, renaissance, mop. So number six. Well, it is a good brush. But like all these things, like the hake, they take a while to get used to. You have to do a lot with them until you get more proficient. All right, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll put a nice, strong lemon, uh, sienna wash over the whole thing. Remember, we're going to do a bit of a Lakeland scene here, so repeat as we go. So um, let's have a... It's a lousy day again today. It was horrible yesterday. Those of rain. Bike ride along the wander with my old mates tomorrow morning, and I th think it's supposed to be quite nice. So let's let's put in a bit of ultramarine. So easy. You just got to do all this while the paper's wet, and we'll just put in a bit of a cloud. Uh, just coming across there, and just a bit darker shadow underneath. So sort of a lowering cloud. Clouds get smaller as you go into the distance, and we'll repeat that in the. Right, okay, that, that'll do. So we're going to put a beach in here. I'm going to dry this now. So take your headphones off or mute. Right, so that was simple enough. Just go for it. Don't fuss and fiddle around. Don't wait, just just do it. Just go in broadly, broadly. Don't try to make portraits of little clouds and so on. Just get the, the washes in and it dries like that, all nice and diffuse and soft. I very, very rarely go over my skies twice. Once it's done, if it's not heavy enough the first time, I don't bother about, about it just just improve the landscape around it right now so using the same colors i'm going to put in sort of a, a lake district sort of very colors i say lake district the lake district is a is a beautiful area in the north of England, North East England, North West England, so I think. So north of Manchester, with a beautiful, beautiful lakes. It's a national treasure. So get your horizon sort of straight. A bit of crimson in there, I think. I'll put a bit of a tree line across. I'm going up uphill here slightly. 
that's wet there, don't you? I keep picking it up on my finger. You can paint quite finely with this brush. Right, now we want a bit of a beach on this side, so we'll put a bit of burnt umber, a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of blue, and we'll just, we'll just dry brush across here. Letting some of those colours show through. Okay, that gives a nice. This brush is it better than I hate for dry brushing? Right, that'll be our beach, and we can uh, put some nice bit of foliage here and there. Uh, now I'm going to dry that again. If you're painting on the spot, of course you can't take a hair dry. So we can call this sort of one brush painting. I've got the other one, the other number six. That's the, the really good quality uh, Isabi squirrel mop. That really is nice. I bought that in France. That comes to a lovely, lovely point. This one, as you can see, you have to work at it. But who knows what it will do in a couple of weeks' time. But I will be going back to acrylics shortly. I seem to have more to say in acrylic. I don't know. But it's nice to to ring the changes. So let's let's put some a bit of detail over there. So a bit of a bit of blue and a little bit of water on the brush, a bit of blue, a bit of a bit of grey, blue, blue, a bit of budget. So let's just Go along this coast here a bit. Oh, just dry brushing. Along there we can darken that a little bit. I do love this this mix with uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine. It's so gorgeous. Rich dark. It's almost a dark green. Oops. That's the problem, see? I've got bristles hanging out all over the place there. So different from the hake. Let's do a bit of an island. in there. Just two colours there. Let's keep the crystals together. No rock, not even a rocky shore, is it? But some, some of this dry brush here. It almost a bit of reflection, wouldn't it? So we'll just carry that on. We'll leave some spaces. I want to get. Um, some dark trees so that I can lift out a couple of boats. So let's get a good, good dark there. Try to leave the paints grey alone at the moment. I might do some of this in the background, but in blue. Bit of a bit of a session. Going off to nothing there. Try and get nice shapes on your trees. 
it takes a while to to learn to do all this. I know we say it's simple, the more people watch it, you say simple. But it's not really, it's only practice, it's just not impossible. It just depends on how much you're willing to to put the time in to do it. You know, Alan and I have spent years just to try and learn to do this sort of stuff. I'll say Alan, Alan and I, of course. My mate. We've become very good friends over the three or four years. We're always emailing, phoning. Well, these phone calls are free in the afternoon, so that's when he rings me. Uh, let's just get a bit of sort of reflection down there. That's not strictly true, really. No, no, I mean, not the, these, the painting, actually. It's not strictly true. But uh, I'm making a painting. Well, let's do some background on that. It's going to be dull. I just put in just a little bit of bit of blue. It's got to register. It's going to be blue enough. Yeah, we spent hours on the phone. Yeah, that's a little bit of detail. Find some fields, hedgerows. This view doesn't exist in reality, it's just my artistic license, just making it up just to show you. I don't really like working from photographs anymore. It's so Restricting, it, you, you tend to, to try to put in everything that's there and, and, and it all goes wrong. It's not a... Better that you work from photographs but do your own things with them. Just use it as a guide. Bit of faint blue now. Well, I think that's enough of that. Okay. Now some a bit of detail. Uh, I know, I said I wanted to, to put some uh, dark trees in, in there so I can lift out. That's a Right, now some stuff on here. Stuff. Just something to, to anchor the foreground to the to the distance. master of the whole mock was uh, Ted Wesson. So I do a line and wash once. I'm sure it was him. Carl Schultz and one is an art group many years ago before he died. Come on. 
water. Plenty of this uh, So I use a bit of paint spray now with me uh, Sienna. I was thinking if, it, if I came the other way it would be easier but it's not really. Right, let's uh, get a bit of, bit of dry brush. It's a great brush for this. A nice bit of warm in there. Put the shadow side. Right, I will do, no I won't do any but I won't use the wiggle, I'll just just carry on the way I'm going. What goes up must come down. Right, a bit of paint's grey. Now what? I'll let that dry before I put any more strokes into it. Uh, it's amazing how far you can go with the big brush, but I'm just I'm going to I'm determined to stay away from that rigger. So see if I can do it all with the one brush. She's growing on me. I was watching one of Tim Milmont's demos doing a painting from uh, Google Earth Street View of Pin Mill. Been there. Very famous little uh, boating place for, in uh, Suffolk. On Thames Barges. Great place. Been on a Thames barge, had a day on one with my brother's brother in law's, I think, 60th birthday, 70th birthday. Had a wonderful day. And we had a curry on board. They don't look so big when they're in the distance, obviously, but when you're in them, they're, they're enormous. Great big holes. Oh, and let's uh, put a bit of. Bit of Bit of, bit of a marker. They sort of just old bits of tree stump just stuck in the in the mud there. That needs a bit more strength in the foliage here, so I'm just on the shadow, so let's just put that in. Okay, well I'm going to do no more to that. Oh, well a bird, or three. Because the bird, the, those little birds, they just give the sky just, a, just something that links it with the landscape. Just uh, and it gives a little bit of interest in in what is largely a well, oh, just a, a flat area. Okay, I'll sign it with me. Uh, I'm more pleased with this one than the one before, but still practicing. But this is a this is this is a beginner's piece, really. There's nothing in there you, you can't do and do a lot better than I've done it. Uh, I'll sign it with my pen. Uh, 
Uh, so this is a few bits of this. Right, there we go, let's put it in a mount <coughs> and have a look. I've still got more decorations to do, I'm going to put a border up under the uh, ceiling now. I'll take the old one down. Well there we are, it's, I, was, uh, I was going to, oh, I'll, I'll do it but I'll have to use the uh, my half inch flat now. I don't know where that is. Uh, yeah. Yes I do. All right, I'll just get a bit of the tissue and a, a nice damp, damp brush and just soften the paint and then we can get another one here. So I did them quite dark on that horizon. Just a little bit of reflection there. A little bit bigger. And that one a bit bigger as well. I'm not you can find fault with my boat because I'm not a boaty, I'm a townie. Just a bit of wind ruffle there. Let's do a bit here. Right, okay, that, that'll do. So we've got, we've got cold and warm. But with plenty of warm on that horizon, a cold sky. Um, could have a figure in there, I suppose. A little fisherman. Uh, what's colour? Bit, bit of umber, a bit of sierra, I think. Let's put him, put him in. Now, this is where a pen comes in handy. Right, that's it, that we'll let him go. Right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Have a go at these things. That they are simple, they look simple, they are simple, but they look better with practice. So I'm enjoying using this mop. I'm going to persevere with it. I haven't abandoned the hake, in case you're wondering, but it's good for me to have a change of material. When you do your trees, get them going out of the picture. That means you're not filling in between two two lines. It's like doing it's like doing clouds between two clumps of trees. You, you've got that space, so you fill it with nice clouds, especially if you're painting in acrylic or oil, and you just fit it in, but it doesn't look right. The, the clouds have got to go partly behind the trees, as they would be in real life. But, uh, but don't confine the edges of your trees to the frame. Take them out of the picture. Similarly, if you're going too high with them, go off. And it'll give them a, a feel of being very close. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.